I want to turn now to a topic that you perhaps thought was done and dusted. Since gay marriage was legalised in Australia, thousands of same-sex couples have married. However, within the church, the issue is far from finalised. Neither Catholic nor Anglican churches will conduct a same-sex marriage, and inside their synods and parish halls, the debate rages on. But last weekend, quietly, in a church in Wangaratta, Victoria, history was made as for the first time an Australian Anglican bishop blessed the civil union of two men, nudging the church one step closer to recognising same-sex marriages. John Davis and Rob Wally are married priests who live in Wangaratta and last year, when their bishop said he'd allow the blessing of same-sex unions, the conservative factions of the church threatened a split. The question had to go to the church's top legal tribunal for a decision, which found in their favour. Now, the pair spoke to us about what that process was like and what being blessed by the church has meant to them. The process of it has been long and careful and we have deliberately done everything we can to make sure it's within the structures of the church. So we've gone through that over two successive synods in our diocese. 14 months later, the appellate tribunal came down with a decision uh, five to one, which was a total vindication of what the Diocese of Wangaratta had done. And so we actually could have this service of blessing. It's not a marriage, it's a service of blessing for persons who are married civilly. Um, um, under the Marriage Act. It was time to say that two old men who have loved each other for a very long time wanted to make that a public commitment in front of God and the community. And what we have found in the last year is we've been surrounded by people that have said, you're doing the right thing. This says something about a God of love. This says something about the beloved community. So we've been encouraged deeply by people we've never met. Uh, there have been nasty voices, there have been death threats, but they've been outnumbered and outsung by the people that are saying, you're doing the right thing and we're with you every step of the way. Uh, I mean, so much of all of this process has been very public, very exposed for a couple of fairly private people. And, and this last step, we didn't have uh, the press cameras. There were eight of us in total. It was very small, but it's a big thing for Christians who are also LGBTIQA people. And there's so many people who just come and say, you're speaking for my granddaughter, you're speaking for my daughter, my son. There's not a family in the country for whom this is not real. I think if I were speaking to a young person who was grappling with sexuality in a place and community, I'd say trust love. Not necessarily what you hear in the church Sunday after Sunday, but deep in the sources of the tradition in the scripture and the community gathering. Trust that there's a love bigger than you know and you can give yourself to that love and it'll lead you on the way. Nobody is outside the grace and the love and the blessing of God. Now, Jonathan, you were brought up in an Anglican church. Um, some people I spoke to about this story were amazed to find out that the Australian Anglican church didn't recognise same-sex sex marriages, right? Is this a sign of um, the ongoing kind of opposition? Is this, is this a sign about a discrepancy between the leadership of the church and the congregants between the pulpit and the pews? It seems that way to me. I should say I'm not... I'm not actively or heavily involved at the moment so i don't mm. have a particular insight into the the current conversation but that seems to be what's happening and from yeah my my background and from having spent a decade of my life in the uk uh in quite close proximity to some very you know old and very anglican institutions uh there often can be that kind of conflict and you can find these situations where it's kind of okay if you get to know the chaplain and they're on board with it and you don't really t tell anyone you can have a lovely ceremony or a blessing uh but that that priest that agent of the church might be putting they might be in a very difficult situation where if if word gets out or if the authorities find out they could lose their their position um mm -hmm. So I think the sooner we can reconcile, if that's what is happening, where we have a discrepancy between the leaders and the kind of broad pulse of the congregation or the views of the priests and the pastors and the chaplains themselves, if the sooner we can reconcile that and it looks like the, the direction of travel, and that lovely story there was an example of that, is towards recognising same-sex marriages, the sooner re we reconcile it, the better, for sure. Now, Christine, you know, Rob and John have been together for decades now, both clergy, both just wanting to, you know, have their, their union you know, recognised. 
and kind of blessed by the church. And there's, uh, there's always some cost in doing that. There's always a cost in going public because you know that you're going to get hate and death threats and all those kinds of things. Why do you think it's so important um, for people who kind of within faith communi communities, LGBTQI people, to not just have civil, civil unions, but to also have that union or that marriage recognised by the church? Because it is their church, you know, <laughs> people of faith, of course, it's, it seems logical to me. Um, you know, I was brought up a Catholic. Um, I don't think, I can't foresee the Catholic Church going down that path uh, any time soon. Uh, I think they've made it quite clear that, that you know, they, marriage for, for them will be as it uh, has been traditionally. Uh, and they're perfectly within their rights to, to take that position. But that was, that's just a beautiful story of two men, men of, men of the church, mm. who obviously have profound faith. Uh, and with, within their profound faith, it is incredibly significant to, to be accepted by the church that you serve and the church that is, is such an important part of your life. I think that's just a beautiful story and it's wonderful. I mean, Let's be honest, Julia. This is the law of the land now, mm. um, and for the for the for the for a church of any of any type yeah. to say we bless something that has occurred under the law of the land uh, is is I think a logical progression, and it's great to see the Anglican Church going down that path and taking that step. It's a really beautiful thing. Peter Fitzsimons is a prominent atheist. Um, so look, 13% of the Australian population identifies as Anglican, right? Mm. Is this something that an atheist should care about? What happens yes. in the church? Tell me why. Well, I was, I've been shocked by this. I mean, I read your story on it particularly. It reminds me, I think, I stand to be corrected, but I think as late as 1976, they discovered Japanese soldiers from the Second World War on a Pacific island that didn't know the war was over. <laughs> and you know, the, well, so we're here 2017. It was that wonderful day that same sex marriage was passed. Here we are three years later. And there are people still going on about it and within the church. And what shocked me most was the people who are within the church, the Jesus that I remember from Peach Ridge Sunday School was a fine man. And he was, I didn't know the word inclusive at the time, but he was an inclusive man. He not only embraced diversity, uh, from memory, I think he kissed the feet of diversity, mm -hmm. did he not? So what I don't understand is how people who are identifying themselves as Christian and Christian values from your story are threatening violence and they had to be surrounded by police cars to, for, for their union. What? And I don't know if it's my role to ask other panellists questions, but may I pose one? Uh, yes, I'll vet it. Christine, <laughs> I mean, you're, well, I'm interested because you're, you, you were very a wonderful voice on the virtues of same-sex marriage. You live a life that demonstrates that it works, that there's no big deal, and yet you seem curious, and you're a Catholic, and yet you're very curiously, it seems to me, accepting of, oh, well, the Catholic Church is not going to do that. Are you not loud to the Catholic Church and saying, you know, it's 2020, yeah. we've moved beyond this, get with it? Well, that's why you know, I say, Peter, it, you know, it's the law of the land now. Uh, and and people of faith, of course, want their churches to, I think it's only natural for them to want to have that, uh, that their unions that are legal, uh, blessed by their by their priest mm. or their pastor. It's, it's a very natural thing. And, and it's a shame, as I, as I said, that, that the Catholic Church doesn't look like it's, it will uh, resile on that any, in any time soon, but it would be a wonderful thing if they did. Would I mean, you resign? I don't know what the equivalent of resigning from the churches. I know you can be excommunicated. I don't, uh, yeah, well, uh, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> as, uh, lapsed, uh, you, can, you, you can lapse as a Catholic, uh, Peter, but I don't think you can ever, you can't ever take the Catholic out of the, <laughs> out of the convent school girl. Uh, sadly, it's, it's always there. Um, uh, but it would be a great thing f to see the Catholic Church uh, give blessings but to just, what are legal marriages in under the law of Australia now. Yeah, in Just quickly, Christina, because I want to move on to Neela in a moment, but just going back to, mm. to the, the point that Jonathan was making. I mean, a lot of polling around the time, I think it was Galaxy Polls, were showing that a majority of churchgoers supported same-sex marriage. Legal sex. A majority of the, the community did. So we do have the discrepancy between mm. the pews and the pulpit in that sense. Are you oh, witnessing that too? I think right. that's that's definitely true. Right. Um, uh, and, you know, but that, that example of 
of that beautiful couple in Victoria. Hopefully that will be a, a leading light uh, to, to other congregations to, to be as inclusive and accepting and to, you know, share the love. Mm -hmm. um, Neela, how do we balance... I mean, because part of this is also a question of, in a civil society, respecting, you know, different religions... Um, and then their self-determination at the same time also upholding kind of equality and, and human rights and, and recognising those debates as well. How do, you, how do you think about how we draw that balance? Look, I think that when you think about these kinds of issues, there is a religious component, there is a cultural component, and then there is, particularly in a multicultural country like Australia, there is a broader societal component as to, as to how we think about these issues. And a lot of, there's often a lot of conflation between those categories. Oftentimes religion points to culture and culture points to religion and everyone tries to hold on to these traditional values while society is trying to push all of these institutions and organisations forwards. Um, uh, so so I, I appreciate that this is a process of change that, that encompasses many, many issues. I think what is beautiful about this particular story, it's, it's beautiful for lots of reasons brought to you to my eyes, but I think what's beautiful about the story is that it is a couple who are Anglican church leaders who are really progressing it for their own community. I think it is very hard for people outside any community to make any meaningful change um, within any particular group or structure because people outside don't necessarily understand specifically what the issues are. They don't specifically have a, a place within that structure. So I think that this is a wonderful example of people who have stood up put themselves on the line and said, this is really important. I'm Anglican. My faith is still important to me, but my love is also important. We need to bring these things together. And I think that there is an opportunity for everyone, whatever community they belong to, to stand up and make those same sorts of, you know, powerful gestures. Mm, and I should actually point out that John Davis and Rob Wally, this is the, the first time that they've kind of said publicly that that blessing has gone ahead. That blessing went, went ahead privately. So let's just hope that there isn't the hate and there isn't yeah. the pushback and it just... Let's hope. Right? And instead it provokes an important conversation. We appreciate them sharing their story with us this evening. Now you're watching The Drum. With me on the panel, Liberal City of Sydney Councillor Christine Forster in a smashing white jacket, <laughs> science editor at the ABC, Jonathan Webb, journalist and columnist with the Sydney Morning Herald, Peter Fitzsimons, and in Melbourne, plastic and reconstructive surgeon, Dr Neela Jana Ramanan. Thank you.